So I'm Jaya Mutu Sipaleski. I'm Chris Sipaleski. And our son Evan was in uh, McMaster Children's Hospital for six weeks in the summer of 2007. So um, when, he, when Evan was about 15 months old, he started to have seizures. And he had his first one at 15 months. And uh, I was pregnant with our daughter, Kaya, at the same time. The first 24 hours of our situation, when we were um, getting everything together with Evan, and he had the first two seizures at home, and then he had three more in hospital. We actually went to our local hospital first, and in Mississauga. And uh, it was our local hospital five minutes down the road from us. And within, you know, a few hours, they had shipped us out to Toronto, uh, down to sick kids. So we had a special team come and pick us up and take us to Toronto. And then we were in Toronto for a couple of hours, and then they decided that they couldn't support us. And we would need to go to another location, so either London or Ottawa. And uh, we ended up being picked up by McMaster Children's Hospital for us to come here. So in 12 hours, we are in three different hospitals um, in three different cities in 12 hours. In those six weeks, um, Evan had 130 gram mole seizures within three or four of those weeks. Uh, in addition to that, he was paralyzed for another three or four weeks within that. So we were here six weeks kind of overlapping with everything that was going on. We came to the house and we had a tour and they filled in all the paperwork and I said, okay, this is your room. And we walked in and I said, wow, you know, that's quite the room. <laughs> I said, this is beautiful. My first thought being three days in the hospital without a change of clothes, um, without a shower, without a hot meal, my first thought was, oh, I can't wait to take a shower. <laughs> it was quite the experience. I remember, I think it was probably the first night that I stayed here. We, um, you know, that walk over from the hospital and walking here and so many nights when things were getting worse and I'd make that walk from the hospital down the, the ramp and across the road and down the street and I get to the sign of Ronald McDonald House and go, okay, it's another day done. We'll make it through tomorrow when we get there. Well, I think we made quite a few friends. As much as that was the hardest summer we had ever experienced in our life, it was actually one of the most rewarding because we made quite a few long-lasting friends from our experience. And it's funny because it's the type of place where everybody's in a state of crisis. Everybody's going through something tough and everything's, everybody's going through something bad at that moment. So the conversations aren't, you know, so I broke a nail or I'm sick, I have a cold. It was, okay, so how was your son's MRI? Mm -hmm. Or how was your daughter's test? Or what did the doctor say about, you know, the feeding tube? And, you know, those were the conversations around the table. And those were the conversations though. And we always knew the new parents who were coming in, they had the deer in the headlights kind of look on their faces. And we always knew that, you know, these are the people that we need to support more. And we need to say, you know, okay, we've been there. We know what you're going through. It may not be the exact same situation, but we know how you're feeling here, have something warm to eat. Um, I always remember with the first thing that I would do first thing in the morning was get a cup of tea and a fresh bagel and then walk over to the hospital. And so many of the other parents would say the same thing. It was so great to have those, that fresh, uh, the fresh foods available for us. And the dinners at home, I think that was one of the best um, programs for us here. You know, to be able to have a hot meal after we spent a whole day in the hospital. Uh, hospital food's not that great. <laughs> so to have a nice meal mm -hmm. at the end of the day, to know that somebody took the time and the care to make the meal for mm -hmm. you, I think that what people need to know is that this is the kind of place that you don't know that you need until you're in those crisis situations. I didn't think we needed it. I didn't think it was something for us. I thought we could handle things on our own. But then when we got into our crisis situation, it was the same. We needed it. We, we had to have it. We had to u make use of the facilities here. And it was just amazing. And one of the things that was key with this, um, with this home, and it's, it's a home. It's not a house. It's a home. Um, the different families, when you're going through these crisis situations, nobody cares about what kind of car you drive or what you know your bank account is. You're all the same kind of person once you're in these situations. And that was one of the main things that came out as we were staying here, that ability to support each other. Some people can give a little bit more than others, depending on their situation. And one of the things that I know is that the home here, the funding situation is quite different. A lot of people think, well, the money that they get is a lot of money, but the reality is, is that they're not um, funded primarily through government funding. 
a lot of their fundraising is donations and support from the community, which is something that's really important. And I know a lot of people donate to research and they think that when they're donating money to some of these organizations that all of the money that they donate is going directly to the people that they see in the commercials and on the ads. But the reality is, is that it's not. A lot of the money goes to administration. Versus here, when you donate money, or if you donate a product or something, or even a dinner, you're donating directly to the families. There's the, the, the dinner at home program. If you're making a meal, that's going straight to the people who are staying here. It's going straight to the families, to the families who are supporting their children who are in the hospital. This can happen to anybody. Anybody can make use of this facility, and everybody needs this facility. And that's one of the things that I tell everybody when I'm talking to them. You know, this is one of those places that they need certain things. We try our best to support um, as much as possible. It could be a very small thing. If you're thinking about giving a gift to somebody, everybody has everything most of the time. You know, rather than buying somebody another pair of socks that they're not going to need again, make a donation instead in their name. You know, if there's something that they need, if there's something that the house needs, there's always a wish list on the website. Check out the wish, wish list. See what things you can add and you can contribute. Um, there's so much. You know, the extra rooms are going to make such a difference. New expansion, the campaign uh, for Ronald McDonald House is about a $5 million campaign. And uh, it's great for the expansion. It's going to be very worthwhile for the community and for the families that are being supported here. We've used Ronald McDonald House again after our situation. Um, where we've had operations on Evan being done and we needed somewhere to stay and again Ronald McDonald House was there for us and this is one of those places where every little donation counts every big donation counts too and however somebody can help it would be greatly appreciated that anything that can be contributed be contributed and make this a success for the house as well as for those of us who use it. First of all, my name is Joan and this is my husband Pat. We're grandparents of Evan John. It was a gift from heaven getting here at um, midnight, midnight when we arrived here and we didn't know anybody in this facility and they were just marvelous. We walked in with just the clothes on, with our clothes on, nothing else. There was a little gift basket for us with little things that we can use for the night. We were not staying. The parents were staying. But as gr grandparents, we were taking Kaya back home. And I remember one of the ladies here, I, I thought she was a volunteer. She offered us tea. And um, for that half an hour that we were here, it was home away from home. I've never been in a situation like this. So I didn't know what to say or what to expect, but I couldn't have asked for anything better. The unusual thing for me was uh, spending time in the hospital there, and that, that was hard. But then I would come over here and catch a few, hour, few hours sleep, which was great. It was a quiet place to rest. For those who want to contribute to this new expansion, please give generously. It is great. It's a great facility and you can make it greater, you can make it better.